Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there today. We do, we do have a few finalists for the competition that we have going on today. We will call them up at the end of service, but we have one, two, three, four, five finalists, so we will get to that in just a bit. It's great, it was great to see all the dads out there competing in the lobby. Uh, it was great seeing some of you trying to cheat at a free game. <laughs> but that's kind of what dads do. Like, we know that, that, that men just like to kind of be competitive about things, right? And so we will get to that in a minute. But today... Today, there's like this very serious side to fatherhood that I kind of want to talk about for, for a few minutes. There's this insecurity that almost every single dad has, this question that looms in our minds, and I'm not setting you up for a joke, this is really serious. And in light of the fact that we are in a fatherless crisis in our country, families without dads. And, 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 and we as dads many times struggle to be present, even when we're present. There's this question that goes off in dad's mind, and I'm telling you right now, of all the insecurities that men have, and we have a ton of them, as a dad, there's this one question that you ask yourself constantly, am I a good dad? Am I a good dad? Um, I have an 18-year-old, a 16-year-old, and an eight-year-old, and I really, seriously, like, I want to be the cool dad, right? Not, not that I want to be the cool dad that, like, just lets my kids do whatever they want, but I do, I want my kids' friends to like me. I want my kids' friends to know that our house is a safe place, that they can come, they can be heard, they can, that they can enjoy themselves, no judgment, right? But am I a good dad? Now, I wanna preface this today by telling you I'm standing up here today not because I have this all figured out. I'm gonna quote the Apostle Paul when he says, I do not consider myself to have arrived, but this one thing I do, putting those things which are behind and press towards the mark for the prize of the high call, right? So dads, we had a goal today. A goal was to win a Traeger grill or a Yeti cool or a Yeti mug or a T-shirt. A lot of us missed the mark. Some of us got it in. And as fathers, it's gonna happen. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna miss the mark sometimes. Sometimes we're gonna get it right. There are days where I'm like, yo, I was a rock star dad today. And then there's other days where I'm like, I absolutely suck and I should have never created life. <laughs> and that's reality. That's reality. Moms, wives, future wives, future dads. There's this thing that happens in us many times where we Set a goal like I'm not gonna yell at my kids. I'm gonna be the life-giving fun dad. And then our kids do something to tick us off and we lose our mind, we scream at them and then we beat ourselves up for the rest of the day because we hurt our kids, we embarrassed our kids, we did the thing that we didn't wanna do. We're gonna talk about this today. Is that all right? My hope today is that we leave here encouraged to have some tools. If what you hear today discourages you or makes you feel Lesser of a dad, that's not my goal. Let me start by saying, dad, if you're worried about being a great dad and you're working at it and you wanna be a better dad, I am so super proud of you today. I'm proud of you, I love you. If you're a father because you had a kid and you're a deadbeat dad and you don't care about your kids, I'm not talking to you today. All right, I'm not talking to you today. That, that's not the point of this message. Right. Do better, all right? But let's talk about, it's not just enough to be a present dad, to be present. Because you could be a present bad dad. You could actually be present and make your household worse because you're there. None of us want that. None of us want to be the person who makes our households hostile. We don't, we don't want that. A lot of us, we bring a lot of stresses from our jobs home. We, we, we carry that that mantle of having to be the provider for our family very seriously, and because of that, that can weigh very heavy on a man emotionally. Come on, somebody. You know what that's like, having to go to a job that you probably don't like every single day to bring home the money. You wanna be appreciated, you wanna be loved, and of course, you wanna be fed. Hey, somebody. 
But where does a dad go to find out if he's a good dad? Where does a dad go to learn to be a good dad? Like, there isn't, I, I looked online, there's no dad school. There isn't. There's no dad school. Oh, maybe I should invent one. Million dollar idea, dad school, right? I'll tell you this, where can a dad go? Not too many places. Not too many places. Because if you're gonna go to someone who did the dad thing and they did the dad thing well, that worked really well for them. That doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna work well for you. There's a lot of factors about being a dad and being a dad to your specific children. But there has to be a standard. There has to be a standard by which we can say, this is a good dad and this is a not so good dad. Huh? How do we know that someone won the game today? By the result. They got it on the mark. Right? Results tell us whether we're doing what we're doing is good or not. I know we don't like to hear that. I know we don't like to hear that. But how do you know that you learned something in school? They gave you a test. And based upon the result of the test, they know whether you learned it or not. Huh? I want to tell you this today, and as we get, get into fathering, I'll tell you this, that God has standards. God has put a set of standards out about parenting, about being a dad, about what it means to be a dad, and how to do dad good, how to be a great dad. Today's, today's talk is to reveal God's standard, not to put anybody down not to make anybody feel bad about themselves. It's to say, this is the standard by which God has set for fathering. How do we know that God has a standard? It says in 1 Timothy 2, 3, this is good and pleases God our Savior. If there is something that is good and pleases God, it means that he has set it as a standard. I'm just gonna simply tell you what a standard is. A standard is like, here in the United States, we drive on the right side of the road. If you drive on the left side of the road, you're going to crash, right? There's a standard. This is how we do it. We, if there's two yellow lines, that means do not pass. Does that mean that nobody ever passes on the double yellow? Well, I mean, I personally have never done that. <laughs> but it's the standard. God has set a standard for fathering, it doesn't mean that we always hit the mark. But that's the goal. That's the standard, okay? If there was no standard, we would have no way of ever finding out how to father, how to be a good dad. With something to gauge, it's like, for example, can I, can I be transparent and honest for a minute? I've been struggling with something lately. And, I, and I've actually, I've contacted a lot of people about this to, not, not to give me affirmation, but I have to create some sort of standard. Like, in this business, where I'm at right now, the size church that we have, how long this church has been open, I don't know that, I, I, there's nothing to gauge whether we're doing a good job or not. There's no standard that says, after 37 years, you should have X amount of people in your church. After a certain amount of years in your church size, you should be making X amount of money in the church. You should have X amount size building. You should have X amount size stuff. There's no standard. So I'm like, okay, so either we're called. Thank you, brother. We're either called to like create some kind of standard or we're supposed to just be content and happy with the way things are all the time. What's the standard? What's the standard in your life? All right, so I want to look at two verses to begin with in the, in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Anybody ever read the book of Proverbs? The book of Proverbs was written by King Solomon. King Solomon is the wisest man that has ever lived. He writes this book to his son. So, sorry to tell you, the book of Proverbs was written to men. Okay? Now, this does not mean that females cannot gain wisdom and knowledge and understanding, but the original intention was written from a father to a son. A son who would one day be a father. 
okay? So now when we read the book of Proverbs, we have to read it through those lenses. A father is saying this to his son who is one day going to be a father. See, we're in a generation today where fathers have raised sons, but fathers haven't raised fathers. This is why you still have 45-year-old boys living at home playing video games in their parents' basement. Sorry, I love you, I love you, come here. Come to this church, I'll give you a bow and then we'll go play video games. <laughs> but fathers raised sons, and they were really good sons. But we're in a generation where fathers didn't raise fathers. And so we have fathers trying to be fathers like sons, where they wanna be their kid's friend and buddy and bro, instead of being father. Ibabaso. Solomon writes this to his son. There's also two other writers in the book of Proverbs. Um, Agur, Agur, A-G-U-R, and King Lemuel. They're both writers in the book of Proverbs, but the main voice is King Solomon. He's writing this to his son. And watch what he says in Proverbs 29, 17. Fathers, correct your son and he will give you comfort. He will also delight your soul. Fathers, correct your son, and he will give you comfort. He will also delight your soul. You see, dads provide correction. Dads provide correction. Fathers, if you leave all of the discipline and correction up to mom, you're missing a great, great opportunity. Now, now, let me, let me explain. Let me explain something to you. Correction does not have to look like anger. If you correct in anger, it's abuse. If you correct in love, it's discipline. But I'm gonna tell you, 80% of my pow pow spankings were given to me in anger, okay? We missed the mark. I mean, I'll tell you straight out, my behind has been beat. All right, look, we gotta ask this question. How many of you in here today, as a kid, you got one of these? Whatever, whatever the weapon was, there was a weapon. <laughs> it was either a belt, or a spoon, or a paddle, or whatever mom could pick up, a chancleta and they held you by the hand. And they weren't giving you a handshake. It was so they could corral you into this. And how many times do I? I still don't know what she said or he said. Half the time I was putting my hand back there and getting my knuckles all busted trying to jump out of the way, back of the legs, upper, lower back, butt. That, that really wasn't correction. That, that really was abuse, because you were angry, and you were taking your anger out on your kid. Come on, somebody. But Pastor Mike, the Bible says, if you spare the rod, you hate your child. Okay. But where did that say you had to be angry? Where did that say you had to be, I'm going to say it right now, pissed off in order to do that? It should break your heart to have to lay a hand on your child. It should not come easy. I'm going to tell you what this what this verse inclines. The word correction has no emotion to it. This word correction has no emotion to attach to it in its writing. I've taught a lot of people how to drive cars. My, my middle child, oh my Lord, my middle child is 16. My middle child is driving, okay? I've taught a lot of people how to drive, and there's this one instance I'm teaching somebody how to drive, and we're, we're I'll tell you right where we were. We were coming out of Wurtsboro into that 15 mile an hour hairpin turn. We're going 45 miles an hour. 
I said, uh, what does that sign say? 15 mile an hour curve, okay. Wait, what does that sign say? 15 mile, no, no, 15 mile, 15, 15, 15. We're going 45. Person never touched the brake. Never crossed their mind. Oh, I should look down. I'm going 45 into a 15 mile an hour curve. Hit this 15 mile an hour curve. This inexperienced driver could not hold the wheel in the curve. I mean, it's a sharp curve. And, and you're going uphill, right? It's a sharp curve. So I didn't get hysterical. I didn't scream. I had already pointed out that we are incorrect. We are missing the mark. <laughs> the car is now going over to the incoming traffic lane. Watch. I reached my hand up. I grabbed the steering wheel. And I brought correction to the car. I brought the car back into the lane. This is, this is correction. This is correction. When our children are getting out of lane, we're bringing them back in the lane. No, 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 that's not how we do it here. This is not how we do it in this house. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it in this house. Now, I could be very intense, but it don't mean I gotta come out my face and scream. Scream, it didn't work for you. It ain't gonna work for your kids. Don't mean I have to hit you in your face, hit you in the back of the head, flick you in the ear. If it gets to a point where the, where the offense warrants a bow bow, and listen, guys, mom, I love you. But a spank in a day did not keep the devil away. <laughs> I believe my family thought a spank in a day kept the devil. I got spanked for everything. Oh, you lost your pencil? Bow! <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like I got spanked a lot. I probably, I, I, I needed it. I get it. <laughs> but today, we, could, we got better tools, all right? Bring correction without the abuse. Bring correction without anger. See, the display of anger is your problem. You got angry because you couldn't control them. No, but they're not listening. It's not that they're not listening. They heard you. Oh, they heard you. And that's what's making you mad. And you can't control them. And because I can't control them, now I'm going to use my anger to dominate them. I'm going to use my raised voice to put fear in them. And as dads, we've done that, right? We, we, we've come out of our face we're screaming or whatever, and then we see our kids. And then we wonder why they don't want to snuggle us and watch a movie. Well, because you scared the piss out of them five seconds ago. And now you want them to snuggle you like it don't work like that. Right? We got to understand this, right? Ephesians 6, 4, watch this. And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Here's another one that, where I have failed as a dad. Um, I would like tickle my kids because I'm playing and I thought tickling was fun. But then when you tickle too long, it's no longer fun to the person being tickled. And then all of a sudden, rage comes out. Right? I told you that. And then now, now as an adult, don't let nobody tickle you. Because you're immediately throwing fists. Right? But that happened as a kid. That happened from being held down and tickled till you peed your pants. And then we kind of repeat those process. Come on. I know it's quiet because I'm, tr I'm right, because it's true, right? <laughs> we provoke our children to wrath many times with how we correct them. Correction should never be embarrassment. Correction should never be done in front of their friends, right? Then here's some tools, guys. I'm trying to help you out because you want to wear the greatest dad in the world T-shirt, but you want to wear it with confidence that you are. So there are some standards. Check this out. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Now, check this out. I always thought this was my mom's job, because my mom did all the training. Like, my mom did potty training, so moms must do all the training. But who was Proverbs written to? Dad. A son who was going to be a dad. So, so it's dad's responsibilities to train their kids some stuff. Right? It's a dad's job to train his son how to be a dad. It's a dad's job. In my, this is all my opinion right now. In my opinion, 
it's a dad's job to teach a son and a daughter how to manage their finances. An art that we've lost. We have a generation of people who have no idea how to manage their finances. They have no idea. They weren't taught. They weren't taught how to save. They weren't taught how to, and whatever. I don't, I don't even want to rabbit track on that one. But the number one thing that this is talking about, are you ready for this? I know, I know it, I know it. Dads are supposed to train their children in their faith. Dads are supposed to train their children in their faith. Not, for dads that attend church, the family is 90% more likely to attend church with a dad that attends church. 90. Not, I mean, that's huge. A dad that attends church, his family is 90% more likely to attend church. Dads, if you're in the room, you are a rock star. You're a rock star. Here's my challenge on this one about sharing your faith. Maybe one dinner a month, one dinner a week. Tell your kids something about the Christian faith while you're sitting at dinner. Just share something. Maybe, all right, here's a challenge. Easy, easy challenge, ready? Whenever, whenever your family sits down for dinner, I know that that's actually rare today, right? Because a lot of us will eat at snack trays in front of the TV or whatever. Whenever you sit down as a family to eat dinner, and moms help dads on this one. Dad, you say the prayer. You say the dinner prayer. Let your kids see you say the dinner prayer. Start there. Easiest thing. Just say the dinner prayer. And, and just don't do good God, good me, bless the food, let's eat, whatever. Like, for real, like, do a real prayer. Let your kids see you do that. And, and guess what? You're going to be horrible at it first. And you're going to be embarrassed. And it's going to be weird. Okay, so you're the dad. You'll learn. We'll get it. But at family dinner, pray. Dad, pray. What that's doing is it's setting him as the spiritual head of the household, even if he doesn't have all the tools yet. And that's okay, because we can get there. We can get there, all right? So dads, train up your child, children, in the way that they naturally bend. If your kid is always outside, like working on his bike and making it faster, don't try to make him a lawyer. <laughs> Please, go buy him a craftsman set of tools or something and like buy him another bike and let him take it apart. Like, feed into what your children naturally bend towards. Don't just try to make them in the thing that you never became. It's not healthy and they will not like it. Train up a child in the way they naturally bend, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. All right, so here's the big idea today. My big challenge. Dads, good dads are present. Good dads are present. Now, I don't mean that you're at home every single day, all day long, because I know that your number one need as a man is to know that you're providing for your family. Totally get that. What I'm saying is, is when you're present, be present. When you're present, be present. We have this great thing now that we can do. It's called pausing TV. Almost all of us can do it now. We can pause TV. So when your kid walks up to you and says, Daddy, 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 pause the TV! <laughs> Dear God! <laughs> you heard him say that the first time. You know you did. You know you heard him the first time. Pause the TV. Hey, what's up, buddy? Daddy, I made this picture for you in art class today. Oh, it's so beautiful, puppy. It doesn't look anything like me. Oh, it's a cat. <laughs> this is the greatest cat I've ever seen in my life. Give them the 15 seconds they're asking for. Give them the three minutes. So when you're present, be present. And then when they walk away and draw something else that you don't understand what they drew, unpause the TV and go back to what you're doing. But be present when you're present. Answer them. Talk to them. Communicate to them. They need to know. Now listen, I understand. I know what it's like walking in from a 12-hour day, and then your kids are like, rah, rah, rah. So say, hey, guys, daddy needs five minutes. I need five minutes to decompress and unwind from the day. So... 
I'm going to go and take a shower. Get ready. Whatever you want to do to talk to me and present to me and show me. Get it all ready. Give me five minutes. I'm going to go take a shower. I'm going to rinse my day off. I'm going to get my head straight. And leave work dad in the shower. And let home daddy come out of the shower. And be present. Even if it's five minutes. Even if it's ten minutes. Be present. Let them display to you what they did at school. Let them display the story that they need to tell you. Let them talk bad about what happened on the playground. Let, let it happen. We need to let our children's voices be heard. That should not be a discouragement. I didn't have that tool. I didn't have that tool in my toolbox as a dad in the early years. And I'd come home and be like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like ah, shut up! And now, nobody wants to talk to me. Nobody wants to hang out with me. And I'm like, I'm lonely. How come my kids don't want me? Because I just screamed at them for no reason. They were excited that daddy was home, but daddy wasn't excited that they were there. Got to have that mind shift. Use the tools. Take, take control. Be, don't be a dad by accident. Be a dad on purpose. Be a dad on purpose. Watch this. Be present. Matthew 3, 16 says this. When Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water immediately. And behold, from heaven, the heavens were opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove upon him. At Jesus' biggest moment, he was being baptized. He was getting called into ministry. His father was there. His father was there. I want to tell you guys something. Last Sunday, last Sunday, my oldest daughter, she was graduating from cosmetology school at 1 o'clock. In fact, they were lining up at 12.30. It's 12.21 right now. And so, like at 12.30, I knew I was winding down my message, and I was thinking to myself, man, I gotta get out of here. Because I know that I gotta get there, and it was down in Chester, so it was a little bit of a drive. I had to be there by one o'clock. I'll tell you something. If my daughter was gonna be graduating at 9.30 in the morning, you would have had a guest speaker on Sunday. You had a guest speaker. And I was going to tell you, I'm going to tell you this, and I know that like, in this position, I know I'm going to get hate mail from other pastors on Facebook, but in this position, what happens a lot of times is, is pastors and leaders, they confuse their calling with their duty as a dad. Yes, being a pastor is my calling, and I really have no choice in that, but it's also my job, and as a job, I can take a day off. Come on, somebody. Take, take a day off on the big moments. Take the day off on the big moments. Because, listen, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Your kids won't remember everything that you came to, but they will remember the ones you were not at. And that sucks. That does. It does. And they don't realize in the moment, maybe now, later on, as they're old, they realize, you know, I realize that my dad had to provide, but in the moment, they don't understand it. So try, as best you can, be present. Father God was present at his son's baptism. Check this out. Dads, last point I want to tell you this. Dads, encourage your children. Encourage your children. Watch this. Matthew 3, 17. And suddenly a voice, Jesus comes out of the water. He's baptized. The heavens open and a voice comes from heaven saying, that's my boy. That's my boy right there. That's my son in whom I'm well pleased. I went to my daughter's graduation yesterday. She says, dad, I swear to God. God, if you say a word, <laughs> when I go up on that stage, oh, I'll be so mad at you. Don't, Dad, don't say nothing. I don't want to hear nothing. I'm like, huh? I, I can't say your name. No. I can't say, whoo. No. You can clap your hands. That's it. Oh, man, I broke out in a sweat because, like, you don't understand. Like, I'm that dad. I'm the obnoxious, embar like, I'm that guy. So they call her name, and I'm <laughs> But, but, my daughter had a little fan club. She had a fan club of friends that were sitting kind of to the side, and they started screaming, now it's on! I said, baby, I didn't start it, but I'm going to finish it. I was like, yeah, kick on! <laughs> Encourage your kids, man. 
encourage your kids, build them up. Tell them that they did a great job even though it was like, okay. Give them the attention when they bring you that little pottery thing that you ask them what it is and they say that they made you a coffee cup and you can't drink out of it because it has holes in it. Man, the best coffee cup ever. I'm going to put it right here on the shelf. I can see it. Encourage your kids. Amen. I want to encourage you dads today, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, man. Dads, you're brilliant. You're brilliant, dad. If, you're, if your kids haven't told you, if, you're, if your own dad isn't around to tell you, you do a good job. With the insecurities of knowing what goes through your mind and the mistakes that you've made, you did a good job. You're doing a good job. Future dads... We kind of set the bar pretty high. We set the bar high, so bring your A game to the dad field, all right? Amen. Hey, if your name, if you uh, won out in the lobby, come on up on stage. Jason Thatcher, Carlos Colon, Bill Burleson, Scott Curry, Fitzroy, you're the only one who got the cooler, so you win the cooler, Fitz. I don't do the most, but I do a lot. I'm going to make a toast because we still alive. Fitzy wins a Yeti cooler. Here you go, man. Congratulations. Love you, bro. All right, Jason Thatcher and who's competing? This one. Jason Thatcher and Carlos. Come on over, Poppy. All right, right here. So here's the game. Here's the line on the, here's the line right here. The game is closest to the center wins the grill. We're, we're, we're going for this Traeger smoker, all right? Closest to the center. Now, I'm going to tell you, first service, the guy got a swish. Swish, first try. Closest to the center. If you guys both get the exact same thing, then you do it again, all right? All right, Carlos, what you got? Woo, okay. Do it again. Outer ring. All right, Jason, you are the winner, buddy. All right. Next up is for the Yeti cool uh, mug. Here we go, guys. Your line is right here. Woo, outer ring. You got it, my man. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We got a couple shirts. How many dads we got in the house? Any dads over here? Here we go. Dad. Anybody else? Dad? Right there. Oh, man. Now you guys are, now it's a competition. Now we got to see what's up. Now we got to see what's up. Nope. I didn't go. I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. All right. All right, dads. We love you. Let me bless you guys on the way out of here today. Father, we thank you and praise you for a service that we could have fun, we could learn, we could grow. Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice today. They're the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. I pray that everything they set their hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, just guys, a quick reminder, the cafe is officially open today.